Let me give you a basic real life example of an all too common postmodernist deconstruction that, like me, you are sure to have experienced in your daily life. The instance of a time that you or anyone else are having a conversation and use the word, quote, normal, and then unironically hesitate before clamouring to define what you mean, as if to say, what even is normal anyway, am I right? Then following up that with laughter. To put it bluntly, one should think very hard before they question fundamental things. It is not normal to flippantly question what is normal. If there is to be any standard or regularity in life, what is normal ought to be inherently known and inherently felt, and it could be argued that it is inherently known and felt already. It could be argued that it is primordial and always has been as something synonymous with terms such as fact, truth, instinct, rationality, reality, is and the fabric of being. The very act of questioning something as fundamental as the meaning of the word normal has a profound effect on the functions of language and culture. For such questioning to be passed off as harmless, trivial, humorous or inconsequential demonstrates the stranglehold that postmodern absurdity has on the Western world or demonstrates the power of virtue signaling. And it's frankly evidence of how deeply entrenched the issue is or has become, especially for this seemingly innocuous situation or innocuous comment to be so commonplace. I am aware of the irony of bothering to explain what is or what ought to be already obvious as evidence of the point I am making, which is why I wish to make it because it ought to be an obvious thing, but it has clearly been forgotten, deliberately or otherwise. In saying that, perhaps I am a fool in pointing all this out in the first place, because it is likely already too late, as at present it cannot even be comfortably agreed upon as to what the definition of normal is, and that is a dire situation indeed. It could be argued that culture is a society's immune system, and objectivity is its first defence. Thus, every high culture and civilization decays by forgetting obvious things. For example, it is common to be asked the question, do you think black lives matter, or do you think white lives matter? Naturally, it should be self-evident, a priori truth, or at the very least a noble lie, and therefore entirely unnecessary to state that lives matter, or that life is quote, important, or has power and inherent value. Of course life is important, and of course you see it as important. Just by existing, you've been imbued with the will to live. If life wasn't important to you, or to anyone else, you would be a nihilist, and you may negate life, see it as pointless, and would not even be here to claim it is important. Thus the answer to the question of whether the lives of group X or group Y matter should be this. Why do you need me to validate whether either matter? I choose to still be alive, and I have not harmed anyone. So of course I think life matters. Of course I think life is important. Yes, you exist and your life has inherent power and value. Congratulations. Descartes said, I think, therefore I am. You shouldn't need and don't need constant validation from others, and you shouldn't feel the need to have your identity publicly represented just to know that you exist or matter. By choosing to remain alive, you obviously think you matter, and thus you matter. The individual is the measure of all things in this instance. Obviously, you exist and have inherent value. By virtue of having any thought at all, you should know you exist. 
This is pretty much one of the most basic philosophical concepts imaginable. Thus, why do we even argue over something that ought to be blatantly objective and self-evident, if not as a consequence of the foolishness of postmodernism? It is fascinating that the masses, the mob, the people with the most inflated sense of self-importance should even need the importance of their life or life itself confirmed by others, be they an enemy or not. To some degree, it is just arrogance. You obviously think you are important and therefore are important, at least to yourself. It's a strange mix of possible nihilism, narcissism, and power dynamics in that you need to hear from others and need to force them to confirm what you already explicitly claim to be true. You claim to be self-confident and yet need your views and your life constantly validated by others. Yes, it is true that one can never be a totally atomized individual in the world. Even the idea of being atomized is always thought of in relation or reference to others through the language of both our inner and outer voices. And yes, Hegel's phenomenology of spirit infers that each self-consciousness belongs to a larger collective self-consciousness. But still, how many times do we need to seek validation from others before we even dare to seek validation from ourselves? Where has the inherent trust, the real trust, in oneself gone? Where has it disappeared to? In 1990, the duo Robert Moore and Douglas Gillette, both exponents of Jungian psychology and comparative mythology, co-authored the book King, Warrior, Magician, Lover, Rediscovering the Archetypes of the Mature Masculine. And within it they wrote the following quote, This function of the king energy shows up everywhere in ancient mythology and in ancient interpretations of actual history. In ancient Egyptian mythology, the world arose from the formlessness and chaos of a vast ocean in the form of a central hill or mound. It came into being by the decree, by the sacred word of the father god Ptah. God of wisdom and order. Yahweh, or God, in the Bible, creates in exactly the same way. Words, in fact, define our reality. They define our worlds. We organize our lives and worlds by concepts, by our thoughts about them, and we can only think in terms of words. In this sense, at least, Words make our reality and make our universe real. Thus, it could obviously be argued that political correctness, cancel culture, and postmodernism in general are direct attacks on the sacred word, on logos, attacks on the sanctity of speech and debate itself. The gradual altering of definitions and elimination of objectivity in words and language in particular is a deliberate attack on the very fabric of the universe as we know it, an attack on what it means to experience reality and ultimately what it means to be human. Because, evidently, those that ceaselessly attack don't like the universe as it is, or they don't like the human experience that we currently have on a deeply fundamental or even spiritual level.